So I explained in detail the math necessary to project one vector onto another. In this video, we're actually going to implement and unit test that math. But I noticed in the last video, I targeted this right-hand side of the equation to explain everything that's going on. I'm actually going to do the math again without explaining it in as much detail as I did in the last video. But I'm also going to bring along this left-hand side because as we implement it in code, we're going to do the dot product and not necessarily call the cosine function. So let's, let's do the exact same math that I did uh, in the previous video. The first thing I'm going to do is to divide both sides by the magnitude of our target vector squared. And our target could be A, it could be B. It's whichever one we're projecting onto. In this case, I'll say we're projecting onto B, though this certainly works with A. Well, when I divide both the left-hand side and the right-hand side by the magnitude squared, that cancels this and cancels one of these. So I will, shall go ahead and erase the parts that we just canceled out here. Bye-bye magnitude of vector b and bye-bye magnitude squared of vector b. We're left with just magnitude of vector b. And then what I did is multiplied both sides by the vector b. Here I'll put the vector b on this side right here. Multiply both sides by the vector b. And recall that the vector b, from the last video, the vector b can be written as separate parts, separate elements. I could say it's the magnitude of vector b, a scalar number, a single number, the length, if it helps you think of the length of the vector, times that vector's direction. Again, the caret means unit length 1 that just gives us our direction. So I can rewrite vector b in terms of its two uh, core uh, pieces here. So I'll, I'll take that out and replace it with what I have here. Magnitude of vector b times b's direction. Well now that I have magnitude of vector b, magnitude of vector b, I can cancel. Again, there we go, we just did our second cancel. Let me get a large eraser here. I can erase that off the bottom and that leaves us with one on the bottom so I can actually just remove the bottom and remove the canceled parts here and then what we're left with on the top is magnitude of the vector that we're trying to project onto the target vector which is B in this case. So magnitude of A cosine theta B exactly what we want on the right however the way we are going to write that in code is like this we'll say a dot b divided by b's magnitude squared. We already have a function that does that. It dots the vector with itself. And then we will t we will times it by vector b, our target vector, the vector that we're trying to project onto. And clear the screen. So now it's time to actually implement the code. But in true form, we will write our unit tests first. So let's open up our unit test for vector 3d and I believe we'll just go down to the bottom for this one. Let's let's collapse the rest of these though. And control end test vector 3d project onto like so. Now let's just start out with a very uh, basic test. Uh, vector 3d Source, we'll say, is 2, 4, vector, 3D, target. Okay, we're going to project our source onto our target. And that will be 1, 0. I essentially am going to cheat and start with a normalized vector pointed on the x-axis. Let me actually try to draw these vectors. I hate using Cartesian planes with vectors because it eats me up inside. I know linear algebra is all about basis vectors and having orthonormal basis, but I think it also helps to think in Cartesian coordinates because that's roughly what we're doing anyway, except when we do the transformations. We've talked about that stuff in previous videos. Anyway, we have 2, 4, so 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, so roughly about here is our source vector and our target vector is 1, 0. So let me draw our 1, 
0, that is our target vector. So if I project this blue vector onto the red vector, hopefully you can quickly see that it's, it's pretty easy if I could draw <laughs> straight lines. Then our projection would be the vector 2, uh, 0, 2 in the x, 0 in the y. So this should hopefully be pretty straightforward. Vector 3D result gets our source vector. Please project onto, I'm just going to clear that off for now, onto our target vector and then expect float equal source dot x should be, I'm just going to stub this out now, control L to cut, control V, 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 replace this with a Y, a Z, and our, basically we're pulling the X component here, so we should expect this to be 2, and the rest of these to be 0, no big deal there, that's hopefully a straightforward test. Let's do something slightly more interesting than that, than just projecting straight onto the X axis. Let's, let's make some interesting vectors. I'm going to say source gets vector 3D uh, 1.0 F 2.0 F 3.0 F and then target gets vector 3D and uh, let's do some random numbers. 4.8 F 9.1 F and 5.6 F like so. And generally, I, I, that's kind of a weird way of doing it. I'm saying, hey, create a vector 3D object, a temporary, and then assign it over to this one. You know, generally, if I, if I was being less lazy, I'd say source.x gets 1, and then I say source.y gets 2, and source.z gets 3, and then I wouldn't make this object, then copy it over. And, ah, I'm probably analyzing this too much. Let's just move on. And, oh, how are we going to project source on the target and do a test for it? We, we can definitely say result gets source dot project onto, and we still need to stub out the project onto function, but I can say project onto target, and then expect float equal uh, result dot x to be equal to what should we put out here? Now we could actually do the math by hand and figure out what we should do out here, but we've already been projecting vectors onto other vectors. Isn't that what we did over here in the GL window? We got this normal, and we normalized it, and then we said, hey, shift velocity, dot that with the normal, and then times it by the normal to put the direction back in there again. If any of this does not make sense to you, go back and review those videos on that topic, but essentially, this is my source, this is my target. Fortunately, my target is length 1, so I can simply say dot and then times it by the target, and that gives me my projection, but we're trying to see if we can avoid the square root call in this normalized function. So what we're actually going to do to, to test this correctly is use our old logic against our new logic. And if our old logic and our new logic get the same result, then I should feel pretty good about it, because I know the old logic worked pretty good worked pretty well. I was bouncing the ship off of it. So I'm actually going to right click this, say new vertical tab group, uh, control, scroll with my mouse to bring that down. Hopefully you have the video turned up to high definition. I just want to reference this code as we go forward here. So I'm actually, hmm, I'm going to make, I'm going to make some new results here. Let's, let's uh, scroll this out as well. I'm going to say Vector 3D, we'll call this our, our new result. Our new result will be source, project on to target, and then our old result, vector 3D, old result, gets our source. Actually, we need, we need our target normalized, don't we? So let's make another vector 3D, target, Normalized, normalized, gets target. Normalize yourself, will you? This is again. We want to avoid this call, but I'm feeling okay using it because we're we're just doing it for testing purposes to test our oh uh, <laughs> sorry our old logic with our new logic. And so our old logic was take our source, dot it with our normalized target. So source dot 
our target normalized and then times that by our target normalized. Again, our target normalized. I'm running out of screen real estate here. Let me scroll out. Oh, I hope you have it turned up to high definition. That's hard for me to read. Uh, our our old result is our oh, our. I have a hard time saying our. <laughs> our old algorithm. And our new result is simply project on. So we haven't even stubbed this out yet. And so now I, I, I should be able to say, hey, old results dot x should be equal to our new result dot x. Control L, control V, 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 and replace this x with a y, z, and a y, z. And I'm hoping this builds. Let's control shift B, see what we get. Build started. Of course we, of course it doesn't build because we forgot to stub out the project onto function. Let's go over there, vector 3D. I think in here again, scroll, control scroll wheel on my mouse there. Uh, inline vector 3D project onto const vector 3D reference target const function. Copy that. Go over to our inline file. I'm going to drag this closer to its header file. And these are the binary non-member operators here. We're going to put it syntactically here below perp counterclockwise xy because that's where it syntactically fits in the header file. Uh, paste that in there. No longer need to say inline because it's part of the header, header uh, info header file info, but we do need our V. Uh, curly, curly, control L, control enter, return, vector 3D, don't do any work, we want our tests to fail, let's see if we build, build started, build succeeded, run it, we should see some red, lovely red, terrible red, okay, let me just write down the equation one more time. Just so you can remember, we, from earlier in this video, we had our... I'm actually going to use source and target instead of vector A and vector B. We had our source vector. We dotted that with our target vector. Yeah, that's, what, that's the mere beginnings. We divided that by our target's magnitude squared. And then this, this, all this returns a scalar. In order to turn that back into a vector, we multiply that against our target vector, like so. Remember, I was using A's and B's before. And the A is the source, the B is the target, but same idea. So we just simply need to write that math equation over here. And target is being passed in here. And this object, the current instance, is our source. So I'm going to say this dot our target. And I actually want to get the entire scalar first just because it makes me feel better to do the entire left side of this equation and then multiply it against the target. I don't know why it makes me feel better about that. But target, uh, give me your magnitude squared. Thank you, IntelliSense, for dying on me. And then times that by the target. So I simply wrote this math equation on the right. I just typed it in here on the left. So let's build this, run this. Hopefully we get some green. Magnitude squared is not a member. Uh, mag magnitude squared. Magnitude squared. Build it, run it. Please work. Okay, I saw a lot of green, but then there's some red here. What's the problem? Value of zero. Source. Source Y. I think it bombed on those first tests we did. For Ah! Man, you're probably laughing at me. What, Jamie, why are you putting source here? We should be putting result. Let me control C this, alt drag over that, control V. Ah, let's build and run. Hopefully the tests are, oh, it's all green, going green. Okay, feeling better about myself and the tests are moving us forward. So this is kind of a, uh, I think this is a good start. There's another kind of test I want to do, but the video is getting long. I'm going to end it here, and in the next video I'm going to, beef up these tests a little bit because this I mean sometimes I'm okay with some very basic tests this would work out but I want to I want to write some tests that really works this out and and further proves I don't know if it completely proves if you really want a full proof go look at Khan Academy and go look at the 
full proof of all the math involved here, especially with the dot product. But uh, I want to further prove that our logic here works, but I want to do that in the next video.